this lads discussions meme is hey bill we've always wondered something what exactly is the deal with your orb and why does your baby want it oh this thing no idea i just found it and it makes these odd noises when i hold it try it <laughs> Why? Why? I'm never going near that orb again. Lightweights. If you wish to send us memes, just so you can get a shout out at the start of these videos, be sure to send them to our Twitter handles. ready because it is time for the halloween edition of lads debate all right then people so for the second edition of billy ween depending on if i upload this one first or the dinosaur one i have planned i guess spoilers if this one comes out first um so for billy ween we decided let's actually have a proper lads debate because Trying to think, we didn't have a Lads Debate Halloween theme last year. We only started. Do when did we start doing Lads Debate? It was right after Halloween, wasn't it? Uh, Heracross vs. Scizor was our Lads Debate. It was in the when we had Z-Dog on for SpongeBob vs. Aquaman's prediction and Trunks vs. Silver. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so relatively, because we already had Halloween videos planned, we didn't do a Lads Debate for Halloween because it was relatively a new thing. We didn't know it would catch on, but people do like it. So <laughs> if you just saw the. L the last episode, or I guess the episode, the recording session before this one, we decided to announce our Halloween episode. It's an episode me and mate joked about. Well, we both... specifically you joked about. You joked about it as well, though. I also don't remember that far back. You both, oh, you both were onto the idea. Yeah. Well, yeah. Funny enough, it became a joke. But then we thought to ourselves, you know what, fuck it, let's actually do it for a lad debate. <laughs> there is another joke Halloween episode we might do next year, but we'll, I think we're still thinking about that. Nemesis versus Adam Taurus. So, I, now I bet some of you are commenting, what the fuck, Bill? <laughs> but when you really think about it, these two actually have quite a lot in common. It's it looks like zombie. one person did. But it's just, the only difference is one's a zombie, the other one's a hybrid. This but... is going to be fun. <laughs> okay, now the main reason we did this is because when it comes to lads debate, we most of, we don't try and think of super connected fights. Most of the time it's like things we're into versus a thing another person's into. But we try and avoid it to be like stupid one side and unless it could be amusing like which we originally fought Dragon Ball versus Dragonite, but boy that's uh... <laughs> Yeah, it was one side no. for the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> but um so, so, I'm a big fan of Resident Evil, which might come as a shock if you're new to my channel. <laughs> Audible gasp. I know, right? And big shock, the man with the Blake profile picture is a big Ruby fan. Who would have thought? <laughs> that proves nothing. Le French exactly. gasp. <laughs> no evidence, mate. Just like <laughs> shredding all sorts of evidence, like just like fan art. Just like, nope, no evidence. I am I never know. shredding that. I'm saying like, no, I mean like your your sketches of fan art, but then you just keep all the other obvious evidence around. <laughs> like, you know, the big room with a ruby duvet, uh, a few Blake pictures. That was a birthday gift! 
I'm just saying, well, man. Regardless, we are going to be doing the stalker fight with the stalker of Jill Valentine versus the stalker of Blake Belladonna. Yeah, and let's be real here, people. No matter who wins, at least Jill's going to either thank Blake or Blake's going to thank Jill. I mean, whoever <laughs> loses, the world they come from wins. Yeah. Oh, maybe not Resident Evil, because there's always a new giant monster. So I mean, um, there's one less. There was one other that's question. That's true. One hey, other thing. was that a Leon joke? God damn it. Sure. Was it? Oh, okay, okay so, unintentional. Okay, that's still kind of hilarious. So, there was one other question that we are going to get into, since Nemesis is first. Which version of ne Nemesis are we going with? Original or remake? Okay, so I was thinking of just doing the remake universe, because... Admittedly, that I do. I have mostly played the remake universe, as it's called, to fans. But because remake Nemesis never got any comic books and stuff like that, he doesn't have the power. He doesn't have the feats like the original has. So I think, for the sake of it, be like I will say it. If remake Nemesis goes up against Adam. I'm putting my money on Adam. So I think, for the sake of like feats, I'm just going to talk about the original timeline Resident Evil. Okay. Which apparently ended up Resident Evil 6. It, if you thought Legend of Zelda's timeline's confusing. <laughs> also, right. I just have to ask, we're not including Marvel vs. Capcom, are we? Obviously not. <laughs> yep. Yeah, obviously. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so Nemesis fought Galactus. Roll credits. <laughs> so, I have a so, time. Um, I have a time. Actually, no, no. I don't I, think Blaze Blue scales to, like high enough. No. no not to Galactus. No. <laughs> So, I have the timer for 10 minutes for our breakdown of Nemesis. First, Bill, are you ready to represent the King of Stars? I am ready. All right. And your time... That was meant to be me clicking my knuckles. <laughs> and your time starts now. So, diving into the world of Resident Evil, which... I just come off just a boring, depressing world. Until you realize it's secretly run by a corporation called Umbrella, which is a pharmaceutical company. And we all know they're trustworthy. Look at uh, look at Varj from uh, <laughs> The Boys. Or Verge, well, I can never remember what it's called. But, big shocker, this pharmaceutical company actually makes deadly bioweapons. And not the normal bioweapons, not like something like, oh, toxic gas or something like that. No, how about we turn a group of people into flesh-eating monsters, giant plants, giant spiders, lizards, and freaking zombies. Because, yeah, apparently a contractor wanted some zombies. <laughs> Who would have thought? And one of these zombies, which, even if you're not familiar with Resident Evil, you've heard his iconic phrase, this is the nemesis, the tyrant. So during the events of like the Spencer Mansion where Star's unit infiltrated a secret base filled with zombies, mutants, mutant dogs, they came across a special zombie called the tyrant, which definitely not suspicious Albert Wesker, definitely never been suspicious the whole game, was secretly involved in making. He wanted to create the perfect weapon. Uh, upon creating this perfect weapon, though, he kind of got a case of impalement. <sighs> Big oof. He, he definitely did not come back after that. He definitely did not somehow bullshit his way back into continuity. Oh, no, he did. Yeah, he definitely did. And uh, eventually, depending on which ending you go with, it's never clear which one's the canon ending, either Chris or Jill killed the tyrant. And so that would be the end of the Tyrant Project, right? Big old fuck no. <laughs> because it turns out that this virus was uh, created by Umbrella, the biggest like pharmaceutical company in the world, they were worried that, oh shit, because some members of Star survived, we're fucked. <laughs> so, during that an unintentional wall zombie outbreak, because my god, man, who would have saw zombies accidentally getting out? <laughs> Raccoon City was infested with zombies, so in the midst of this chaos, they decided to unleash their, as it's stated, the perfect tyrant. They released Nemesis to eliminate the members of Stars. 
Okay, and gonna... yes, his name is literally Nemesis. I'm gonna pause the timer real quick for a quick question. This Nemesis is different from the tyrant that was killed by Chris or Jill, correct? Just wanna. It, it, a completely different tyrant, different virus. Well, he has two viruses, which I'll get more details into. Okay, just wanted to double details check. Details into. Just wanted to double check. Yeah, that. The, yeah. The, Cause you yeah, have... the original tyrant was the first one, and he got killed very quickly compared to the other tyrants. Cause trust me, I'm going to be talking about a lot of tyrants. Okay, you have seven minutes and four seconds left, starting now. Right then. So, unknown to Jill and Bradford, this zombie got unleashed upon them, and what you would think at first is just like any of the other tyrants, because this is the third game, so at this point you fought the original one and the one that was chasing Leon and Claire, but it turns out, no, this nemesis was not only super intelligent, super deadly, he is the most powerful B.O.W. at the time of the original Resident Evil timeline. And of course, his main goal is just to kill Jill. As far as, at least in terms of the third game anyway, because it was never confirmed what happened to Chris at the time. She is the last member of Stars remaining. So, Jill, completely outmatched, outgunned, outpowered, had to evade the Nemesis. Depending on which, there are different endings to Resident Evil 3 where you can fight the Tyrant, but it doesn't end well for Jill, that's funny enough. <laughs> Unless you do it in a certain order, it's weird. To get the, the canon and good ending, you have to take a few steps, it's weird. <laughs> Uh, so Nemesis, for a majority of the third game, was pursuing Claire, because, well, that was his objective. All he cared about was killing Jill. And to say he's a perfect tyrant, yeah, he is. In turn, through the comic books, mangas, movie, he he has loads of weapons, loads of abilities. And he is just so damn hard to get rid of. Unlike the other tyrants who could be easily taken out with either a magnum weapon, an RPG, it takes a lot to kill this tyrant. This tyrant was made to be perfect. It was made to endure punishment, but also to use the viruses of other monsters to his advantage. Sean, pause the timer real quick. Of course, is everything okay? I just want to make a joke. Go joke, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> hmm. Uh, Bioengineered to be the perfect monster. Where have I heard that before? Mm, I don't know, but I can imagine Umbrella had a hard time selling this idea to its buyers. Yeah, maybe. Okay. You have... That's going to bug me. Mm, same here. <laughs> you think your puns are perfect. You both think that, don't you? <laughs> All right, that's enough freeway puns. Let's uh, okay. finish off the Nemesis section. Four minutes, 54 <laughs> seconds left. You ready? I am ready. Time starts now. Right then. So this Nemesis, of course, being the perfect tyrant, how is he different from Mr. X? Yes, I'm not even kidding, mate. In Resident Evil 2, there's literally a time called Mr. X. It's, <laughs> it's dumb. <laughs> He was a scary boss though in the remake. Ugh. Being stalked by that fucker. But speaking of stalking, this nemesis was made to surpass those other tyrants. Ones that were that could survive like explosions from anti-tank missiles. Even the ones that Leon fought later on down the series. The nemesis was always still referred to as this was the perfect tyrant. No tyrant ever came close to it. And we're talking about tyrants that can intercept hypersonic missiles with one hand and just throw it away. Nemesis was superior to that. Even Albert Wesker, because big shocker, he didn't die. Like, what? How could this be? I am shook of. I know, right? Man, who would have seen it coming in Resident Evil 5 except everyone, because apparently they advertised that. Yeah, I'm not even kidding, they advertised Albert being alive. <laughs> Mark it in. <laughs> but, um, even Albert Wesker and me and mate both know how we've seen him in Resident Evil 5. He has even gone on to say Nemesis was too dangerous to the point when he was taking documents during the whole Resident Evil 2 and 3 story, he was keeping a distance in fear for his life against Nemesis. And at this point, this is when he gained his superpowers. 
So when Albert Wesker is too nervous to want to approach Nemesis, you know you've done fucked up. Like, to give an idea of his weaponry, for instance, he has a minigun, which before anyone says, oh, that's in the live action movie. No, it was confirmed in one of the other games. This is also part of Nemesis Arsenal. It was cut from the original game, but he does use it in both the comic books and the crossover game, which apparently is canon, but I'm a bit iffy about using that. But given the fact it's also been used in the comic book of the original timeline, I'm comfortable giving him the minigun. He's used anti-tank missiles, and he's also used uh, flamethrowers, which, again, that was also cut from the original, but given the fact the remake also gives it to him. But... Now, I know I said I'm not using the remake time, but let's be real here, like, even against Adam, I don't think a flamethrower is going to do much. But this is showing that Nemesis knows how to use weaponry, and he takes some sort of sick satisfaction trying to kill Stars members, because in the remake and the original timeline, he could have killed Jill at any moment, but... He wants the thrill of chasing his opponent. Because you see it in the remake, he holds the flamethrower slowly to Jill to say, run. And he slowly pursues her in many situations. The only time he ever moves a bit faster is when Jill's getting too far away, or he wants to surprise her by jumping in front of her. But Nemesis is sadistic. This might be a zombie and mindless monster. He shows a lot of sadistic intent, like, side beside him. This could be due to the fact the person that also contributed to the Tyrant Project was a bit of a psychopath. So, I guess it is true, but uh, genetics do make the man. <laughs> and, yeah, Nemesis fully enjoys killing people because he's a monster. There's nothing redeemable about this quote-unquote man. Nemesis will pursue Jill to the point he's just a goop on the floor. Yes, in the original timeline, when Nemesis was struck by a laser, he was still alive. Which is insane. Um, I think that's all I've got to really say about Nemesis, really, so... Shall we get on to the good old Adam? I will stop time here. You had 49 seconds left. I uh, should have... Oh, okay, you said 49. I thought you said 69 for a moment. I was like, ah, damn it. No. <laughs> made it. I mean, you had a minute Should've and nine. But... Uh, 49 seconds were left on the clock. Okay, that was definitely interesting. There are some variables I have to consider, but I imagine we're going to dive deeper into the debate side, but I have my pen and notebook for that specific portion to write down, plus and minuses of my own. Cool, cool, cool. So, Maid, I will, you are also going to be given 10 minutes to talk about Mr. Adam Torres. Are you ready? As uh, ready as I'll ever be, I suppose. All right. Begin the bullshit. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> in the world of Remnant, there exists two kinds of people. Humans and Faunus. Faunus are, like, human-animal hybrids, where basically they have, like, one animal trait somewhere on their body. This can be something like a monkey tail, cat ears even chameleon skin. Or it could be a set of horns, which uh, belong to uh, Adam Taurus, who, uh, much like a lot of Faunus, was... Uh, okay, hold on, mate. I'm uh, going to stop the time real quick, because this is going to be a question for later on with Faunus in general. Okay. Uh, is the Faunus trait mostly... A physical trait, or is it a DNA trait? Like, is it genetically passed down uh, in, in the Taurus family line, or is it just... Uh, yes. Okay, so... But it's just, it's just a set of horns. Okay. But it is... Also, like, fun fact... It is genetic because it is passed down to this family, correct? Yeah, although that being said, if Faunus... Uh, okay, if Faunus of the same type uh, make a baby, then... It will be the same type of faunus, but if two faunus of a different type uh, make a baby, that kid will be completely random. Okay, I wrote that down because that's going to be that's going to play a factor into the debate because uh, there's a legitimate question I'm going to have about that. But you may resume. You have nine minutes and twenty seconds left. In three, two, one, resume. Hey. Uh, Adam, much like many Faunus, uh, was subjected to a lot of, uh, 
horrific shit, including uh, slavery under the Schnee Dust Company. Which, uh... Uh, Sean, you know how, like, uh, people brand cattle and stuff? Yeah. Adam got that treatment, and uh, this is where they branded him. Ouch. Over his fucking eye. God, that, that sight. Just, Jesus. But eventually he managed to join up with the White Fang, and he started a little thing uh, with them. Because, well, the White Fang were originally like a protest group, like proclaiming equal rights for Faunus. But when Gera Belladonna stepped down as the High Leader and Sienna Khan took over, she took a more violent approach. And Adam started the trend of wearing Grim Masks. His philosophy was, if humanity want to make monsters out of Faunus, then dawn the face of monsters. Uh, but eventually, during one of their, uh... Like, they were just trying to pass through an area, then some douchebag humans were attacking them. Adam did his best to defend, uh, their rally. But when a uh, human decided to go for, uh... Garrett in a sneak attack. And that was his first kill. Shit. Yeah. Most blood you'll ever see in Ruby. Uh. Though, well, thing is, most people would, like, you know, say, that was too far, that wasn't necessary, which, you know, Garrett did. However, Sienna and everyone else were praising him, you know, congratulating him on this kill. And, uh, this started a, a, a cycle for young Adam, because eventually, like, yeah, it was an act of defense, uh, self-defense. Later on, uh, his kills became more accidental and somewhat justified. It, it got to a point where he was just killing, like, just for the sake of it, really. Because at the end of the day, he just hates humans. Oh, I can't see why. They seem like kind of reasonable people in this universe. And he would aid Sienna's cause in uh, uh, stealing from Schnee uh, Company cargo trains, burning down shops that refused to serve Faunus, uh, even attacking the Huntsman Academies, you know, the ones that train huntsmen to become the protectors of the world. Uh, he was in part of uh, taking down Beacon and, well, uh, was going to take down Haven with the help of uh, Hazel and, well, his leader, which, you know, is Salem. And he tried to persuade Sienna, saying that humanity shouldn't fear the Faunus. They should serve the Faunus. Sienna wasn't down for starting a war with humans that she believed they couldn't win. So Adam murdered her and took the throne of High Leader of the White Fang for himself. However, all this uh, uh, lust for killing and uh, destruction of mankind, it created a rift between him and uh, his girlfriend at the time, Blake Belladonna, aka Beskel. Horrified by all of his actions, she ran away, uh, went to Beacon, they reunited when Adam attacked it and cut her best friend and teammate's uh, arm off. Yeah, because there was uh, one other thing he wanted to do is track down the deserter and destroy everything that she loves. When he found out she was in Menagerie, uh, instructed uh, two brothers, uh, Corsican Finnick, to slaughter her family and bring her to him. How well do you think that went? Not well, I imagine. No, because as uh, him and a bunch of other White Fang grunts were preparing to destroy Haven, that's when a Faunus militia showed up with pretty much all of Menagerie, or if not most of it. Uh, his bombs were disarmed. They were horribly outnumbered. All Adam could really do was just get out of there. But this meant 
he desired his brothers and sisters to just be captured. Or, well, yeah, they were all just captured. And when he went back to the White Fang, they just saw him as a coward. Deserter. A traitor. Who doesn't deserve any to be anywhere near that throne. He murdered a lot of them. Oh, yeah, because that's really smart to do to a giant man with a sword. <laughs> yeah. Though even while he still had this throne, and what tiny piece of any support from the White Fang he could still have, there was one thing that was still driving his hatred, aside from just humanity as a whole, and that being Blake. So he followed her across a whole continent, waited until she was alone, until he could enact his revenge. But she wasn't alone, and after a fight with uh, her and Yang Xiaolong, which resulted in all three of their auras being depleted, Adam was finally uh, killed by double impalement through the chest, falling off a cliff, breaking his spine on the way down, and into freezing water. However, was this really a victory? In ways, yes. Sorry, I'm trying to think of the best way to uh, reword this bit. Yeah, I was just trying I, to think like, oh, is that I it? I did it this morning. <laughs> This is why you write down your uh, notes, Mike. Well, I had other shit to do today. At the end of the day, all Adam was originally was just... A, a boy born into an unforgiving world. He went down a dark path and had no one uh, to bring him out of it. Mm. He made his choice, and that was just to kill any humans that he could... And just in the name of the justice that he was denied. Is that how you you know what? I'm just going to end it there. All right. That was... That's with... the best way I can possibly uh, end his That thing. was with 30 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, I was timing myself as well. I will set another timer for 15 minutes for the debate aspect because there's several questions I have because of, with these two. Oh, wait, we upped it to 25 minutes now. Do you think that... How long have we been going for? We're over the two-hour mark. Okay, the old, okay 15 so, minutes. Yeah, so 15 <laughs> minutes, I think, is going to work. So, are we ready to decide the official debate between Nemesis and Adam? Let's do this. Let us begin, starting now. All right, then. So, here's my question about, like, Adam. How mm -hmm. good is his aura's healing ability? Let's go over, like, the survivability at first. Right. Uh, basically, aura in Ruby is basically just more or less the same with uh, just about everyone. Aura is the physical manifestation of their soul. They can use it to uh, block attacks or uh, heal some wounds. It's possible for them to just recover their aura on the fly, like we see Jean do in Volume 7 during training with the Aesops uh, and just the rest of the cast. But we never saw Adam do it. Yeah, but there's no reason to assume he can't do it. Then why didn't he do it in his final act? I imagine... For all we know, he could have. <laughs> that's not good enough. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Well, I yeah, for all we know, he did. did. Well, I imagine, like, your aura's depleted and you're still fighting on... With or yeah, once it's... Once it's depleted, it's gone. Okay. And that's, like, that's it for a semblance. Here's the thing, mate. He's still got stabbed. Which aura has shown that he could After him. his aura was depleted. Exactly. If he couldn't have returned it instantly, he didn't do it. No, no, no. When I say recharge, I mean... Okay, oh. whilst taking damage, uh, they can uh, recover. Okay, so here's still my question. Good oh. The jump the scene I mentioned, his aura wasn't broken. Okay, here's here's my question uh, for Bill. Uh, talk about Nemesis' regen. Like, how is that compared to Ooh. Aura? Oh, good of you to ask, Sean. So, Nemesis' healing factor is that of a tyrant. Now, tyrant's healing factors go from, like, certain points they can regrow limbs, or they can just change their limbs depending on which body part they lost. Example being William Birkin, aka he had the G virus, which was an improved version of the T virus. That healing factor 
was so broken that the moment they take damage, their body immediately starts healing. The moment okay. you blow off their giant eyeball, okay, okay. it can recover. Which so one why is that important, you want? He has a superior virus to William Birkins. Okay. As evidence in the comic book, in the comic book, he was able to beat William Birkin to a point William's healing factor stopped working. Yes, to the point William had to run away because Nemesis damaged him too much. So if you're probably wondering, okay, what's the level of the G virus's survivability, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was at one point fighting Claire. He got shredded to pieces. All that was left of him was just a gunky bit of flesh on the floor. And a few seconds after that, he was a giant monster. But Nemesis managed to punch him to the point he couldn't heal and had to run away. Okay. Bullshit? Yes. But it just goes to show, like, how determined Nemesis is. Okay, so, and I think Aura depends on the individual with their durability, right? It really just depends on, like, uh, how much damage they take and, like... It took the fight goes. both Blake and Yang to overpower Adam's aura. Yeah. And, and I made this a, this obvious question is obviously for me. At that point in the story, how powerful would you say Blake and Yang were? Are you pausing the time when you ask these questions, Sean? I'm about to pause timer for this one, yes. Because okay. I'm also writing down my the info you guys have given me. So the timer is paused, mate. If you were to give a gen general guess of how powerful Blake and Yang were when they fought Adam, what would you roughly say? Oh, uh, let's see. I mean, in terms of like, well, I don't know. Let's say like, you know, town, city, mountain. Like, I can't really calc any of that shit. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be that. Just like in general, what do you think would be? like a good showcase of how strong they both are individually. Okay, well, they're both able to uh, fight giant Atlesian military mechs. Uh, Yang even punched one to pieces in Volume 2. Uh, and... Okay, while this is technically after Adam died, they were able to keep up with Cinder, who's a full maiden, and I think... This okay. might be reasonable scaling is because in their fight it took both of them okay. to beat him. Okay, I don't. And think... if just one of them could like to keep up with Cinder, then I think it's at least reasonable. I don't think they this... had training from Aesops. Okay, the training for Aesops was that after Adam as well. Uh, yes, it was not long after. So scaling to Cinder does not apply. That is my official ruling. All right, fine. I do think the giant mech thing is also impressive. Like, was it multiple pieces just, like, chuck in half? Uh, yeah, Yang tore that thing apart. Okay. Ah, but I have a counter to that, funny enough. Go ahead, Bill. It was a prototype. Because the mechs we see that Einwood would eventually use were far superior. Yang only destroyed a prototype that was stolen. Which yeah, and the cast have gotten stronger since then. Well, but okay. that's what I'm saying. Okay. They never fought the more Hang powerful on. mechs. Hang on. So the mech was made out of a very tough material, I imagine, like some sort of metal, right? Yeah, you could lowball it and say steel, but logically, because it was like military grade, you could argue a titanium alloy or even something like Tuxton. Yeah, no, military grade does sound right because it was what you said, an Atlas one? Well, yeah. Yeah, so Atlas being a military corporation. They would have access to military tough metals, so that uh, that would be reasonable. Yeah. Even if I mean, metal the atoms, metal the atoms already more than capable of slicing through himself. Ah, oh, shit, man, that's a good point. If uh, if oh. only Nemesis fought against something with that level of strength. All right, I'll resume the ti timer so Bill can go on his rant. <laughs> rant, you know. <laughs> Have you resumed the time now? Yes. 11 minutes remain. Ah, oh. Man, titanium armor. Gosh. Nemesis has never fought something like that. <gasps> but wait, he has. Mr. X gone give it to you. But in this case, no. Now, the tyrants, how their power worked is 
because the more beastly they go, the more monstrous they become, they had to give the tyrant a suit so that it contains their animalistic side. But, shout out Barbara. That's funny, <laughs> she wants to get involved. But, the suit had to be so strong it had to be military grade. And it was in fact titanium uh, armor. And guess what? Nemesis fought six of these guys back to back, even tearing through one of their armors. Yeah, Nemesis had to tear through one of their armors just to get a kill and blow on them, but managed to kill sit four five others at the same time as fighting the G-Virus monster. He fought seven POWs at the same time. And you may be thinking, okay, how interesting okay. is a time? Okay, okay. Here's the problem. How many shots did it take Nemesis? Honest question. To tear the armor. What do you mean by honest shots? How many times did he have to attack the arm before he was able to go through it, essentially, is what I'm asking. Oh, no, he just literally tore it off. Because his main priority was William. The tyrants were just inconveniences. Every time a tyrant grabbed him, he would, he elbowed one and instant killed it. He impaled one through his armor with his tentacles. And then the last one, he just tore off his armor. It turned into the mighty tyrant form of Super Tyrant. And he just one-shotted that as well. He's pretty much like, fuck off, I'm fighting William Birkin. Yeah. I'm asking that because of this gift made posted. So they both are actually powerful enough to go through stuff like titanium. So I just want to bring up that's a black trailer feat, by the way. So that's pre series. Still canon. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm but saying that's... that's before the show actually starts. All right. And, you know, timer... the cast get better since. All right. So time but... will resume now. Continue. So the other thing I want to bring up about the tyrant, though, guess who the tyrants are compared to amongst the. Re Resident Evil villains, mate. Go on. You're asking someone who's only played one Resident Evil game. Okay, I thought you at least know it's Albert Wesker. And you may be thinking, okay, what does Albert Wesker have on him? Well, you might know these two, Sean and mate. Do you remember a certain level where you had to deal with the tribe zombies when you okay. were playing as? Now you may be thinking, okay, why are these important? Because they had the same virus that Albert had. Uruburos, and I right? actually... Yeah. But, why is that important to Nemesis? Well, in this part, which I'm going to post it as well as a timestamp. So, uh, by the way, if you want to see a full Let's Play of this, link in the description below. Take off one and point at... for shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> at 50 minutes and 36 seconds to 50 minutes and 44 seconds sean watch what happens when a literal beam of sunlight is heading towards one of the tribe leaders oh so it hang on i will double check a couple things because that tribesman like... literally blocked a laser from the sun yes okay i was double checking because it looked like it is barely missing his his hitbox overall so i was double checking that Right. Now you may be thinking, okay, again, Bill, why are you bringing this up? Well, fun fact. Nemesis is said to be even stronger than Albert. And Albert is a superior uh, plugger than this chieftain that blocked a fucking beam of sunlight. Nemesis is superior to that. And you may be thinking, okay, is this... Can you consider this, uh, like, canon... In, I'm not even kidding about this, a Wii exclusive game, Albert fought two tyrants which were on par with the tyrant's nemesis fought, and believe it or not, Albert struggled to just deal with two. It took him half an hour to kill just two. Nemesis killed six when he was barely trying to. Goes to show that Nemesis ain't just a regular tyrant. He, there's a reason he's called the perfect tyrant. Because Albert doesn't fuck with him because even said in now, you've wondered, oh, where would this uh, Albert quote come from? In a Code Veronica thing, which me and Jara talked about, again, another shameless plug, we talked about the game. Uh, it turns out, if you had the Dreamcast version of Code Veronica, Albert has a whole audio log of talking about his experience watching Nemesis, and he says he wants to keep his distance because Nemesis is too dangerous. Okay. This was when he had the virus. Okay. Um, so, power-wise and durability-wise, I... I think I got somewhat of an idea with these two. But, speed-wise, I think there's an obvious winner in speed. Yeah, Bill, how fast is Nemesis? 
Well, given the fact he's capable of keeping up with these tyrants, which these tyrants were also used against Albert, and Albert's virus has shown it can deal with light speed uh, attacks, it's reasonable to say Nemesis can keep up with these sort of characters because we've seen him do it against other tyrants. Mm. Again, build light speed tyrants. Sorry, Bill, but I do not buy it. Yeah, like. I like the thing you just showed. I can't really buy that as them having like light speed, like well speeds. Ah, uh, but you have always used to argue about the laser thing. Well, here's the problem: it's a different virus, and as you say instead, Nemesis does not have Ouroboros. He has a different virus. Pause in the timer. Which, to my understanding, would, yeah, is just does. like sure he's more powerful than Wesker, but is he faster than Wesker? Based off this, I don't think so. So, I do not buy oh, Nemesis light speed. Oh, to be fair, I think it is a fair comparison. And yes, he doesn't have the last plugus. But one, the T-Virus is stated to be the most dangerous also, virus within even Resident that, Evil. In, taking that into consideration, uh, going to Link's Death Battle, his, that number was about 10% of the speed of light. Which are those two? Yeah, and I also want to bring up, like, Sean, the Link thing uh, was him dodging a laser, like, as or like just before it was being fired. Right. So it's very yeah, similar that's, to that blocking that's not what, uh, not really, because the light had already been fired and was just, like, being moved, like, that, up and down, like, a okay. column or something. It's okay. not really... You I wouldn't really what? call that the same thing. Uh, yeah. Actually, I looking back at it, I think you're right. Uh, but that begs the question, going to resume timer here, how about Adam? Okay, well, obviously, he's, like, more than fast enough to block bullets. Also, won't lie. As we were recording, I just found this kiff and watch like the last bullet he blocks. He, he doesn't even, even look to... at it, and it was so unnecessary. Yeah, he didn't even need to block that. <laughs> yeah. Uh now of course Ruby characters like Mercury and Emerald were able to dodge a natural lightning, which Death Battle counts to be around like uh about Mark 40, right roughly. But uh, here's the big thing, which uh, they could have brought up for Blake vs. Mika, but it was not necessary. And it was, again, something Adam did in the Black trailer, which was blocking a particle beam. Okay, that is important. Now, for a little bit more context, mm. uh, this spider droid that fired uh, that particle beam, Adam wasted a little bit before he moved his sword up to block it. And that's been couched to around, like, 42% the speed of light, like, roughly thereabouts. Okay, so even if you were to give Nemesis the light speed thing we saw earlier, I don't think that's faster than this. So I can definitively say right now, Adam has speed in the bag. Uh, what if I told you he also has survived a particle beam? This isn't survivability, original... this is a speed feed I'm, I'm going over. Yeah, this is Adam registering it coming at him and blocking None. it. That's what I was going to say, actually. In his final confrontation with Jill, if he wasn't uh, damaged to the point of becoming a huge monster, if you try and use the particle beam cannon, which you can use on him, Nemesis will react to it and dodge it before it's fully charged. So you could argue that is a light speed feat. I don't okay, think maybe you have a number based on like distance and how long it took him. Mm. Uh, let me get an image of it up, Sean, if you could pause it. Sure thing. We have under five so minutes. If I can actually show... We have about four minutes left of the debate. Okay, because okay, four minutes, then I definitely want to bring up the most critical question regarding Nemesis. I haven't even talked about Adam's semblance yet. You still got time. Ah, well, funny enough, I have time for that as well. Annoying, uh, trying to get this. If I can't get the image, but to put, uh, do, 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 do. Ah. all right, here's an image of. Oh, come on, why is it not working, man? Fuck's sake, things going wrong on my laptop actually. Like, it's not getting up images on time. Image. Right then. So this laser here, you have to lead Nemesis right in front of that to hit him. Now again, if you don't damage Nemesis to the point where he's just a giant monster blob, in his 
stance form, if you try and use this laser on him before he's a big pile of mush, he will look at the laser and just back off from it. So this is directly in his face. And he's just like, whoa. And of course, yeah, you have to then continue fighting him until the laser's powered up again to fire. Well, even and that's not even taken in the remake, for instance. So in the first shot in the remake, because this is consistent, if you fire the laser at first, he'll slightly move to the right as it's fired. And that's him in his giant form. So if a lesser powered nemesis can do it, couldn't you argue the more powerful one has shown like he's dealt with light speed at tyrants before? Sorry, Dilly, I still don't buy it. And yeah, fair enough. I just thought I'd provide more notes. That but, is uh, impressive, but I... again, I don't have a I don't think that's as fast as what Adam did early on in the black trailer. Fair enough, but you know, maybe I also just... semblance. Okay, so Adam Semblance. Uh, you guys know what Yang's is? Basically, like, take attacks and adds it to her physical strength. Right. Adam's is basically the same thing, but he doesn't have to actually take it. Uh, it requires him to just block attacks with his sword. Uh, or it could just be an object that he's holding. But, you know, his sword is his brand, but, like, he's a bootleg Virgil. What do you expect? Uh... And all this uh, powers up to create the Moon Slice, which is what disintegrates the spider droid that I showed the gif of before. Like, he atomizes that thing. He had to absorb its energy, though, to do it, because he's never been able to do that on other characters. Well, sure. Yeah, still an impressive showing, though. It is, but he had to have absorbed the particles from the laser. And it's a thing that's kind of... so. He needs the sword for his semblance to work, and as we've seen in the show, when his sword got knocked away, he was pretty much useless without it. Yeah, but you also have to be fast enough to, like, get it off him. But here's the thing about that, how Nemesis can that. He has kind of a similar power. He can, in fact, take the damage, and what does he do with it? He can add that into a mutation. In both the original and the remakes, he got his arm immediately chopped off, so what did he do in an instant? Regrew, either depending on the one you go over, he grew either multiple tentacles at once, or a giant tentacle, which gave him the ability to paralyze his opponent. So, if Nemesis strikes Adam, Adam will take that energy, sure, maybe have enough to slice off Nemesis' arm, but then just instantly he'll grow a large or multiple tentacles towards Adam. So, now he has multiple weapons thanks to Adam's strike. And Nemesis's ability, the more damage he sustains, the more he mutates to the point whether the original or the remake, he becomes a giant monster. So Adam's just making the fight harder and harder for him. All it's going to take is Nemesis to disarm him. All right. Which now he can do, so he's definitely more intelligent. Now for the big question I have. To pause the timer. Yes. The question that I've heard stuff about. Can Nemesis infect this... people? Yes. This is going to be my ace in the hole if the either okay. the light speed or the uh, semblance thing didn't work. How does the infection work? Well, then, allow me to put on my smart glasses. So the T virus, as well as the pluggers within Nemesis, is capable of not only infecting people through either. Not, uh, so the T-Virus it used to be through saliva. That's not the case with Nemesis, because he also has a parasite in him, the Last Plagas. Which again, Adam had, and uh, not Adam, Albert had. And uh, all he has to actually do is just touch you. As he did to Bradford in their first encounter in the original time. All he had to do was touch Brad's face and put the parasite within him. And sadly for Bradford, our favorite coward helicopter pilot, R.I.P. our boy, he became an infected parasite. Okay. And Which not just that, even through his tentacles, one jab, you're infected and you're paralyzed. That's the thing, it doesn't just Which... make you infected, you're paralyzed. Which leads me to a question for me with Aura. How is Aura against infections? Because we see it with <laughs> physical damage. Is it still like an active shield I'll get around something that can infect you? Admittedly, 
Okay, there is a thing in Volume 4 where Crow got poisoned by Tyrion. Okay. Mm hmm Yeah. However, that only happened after his aura broke. Okay. So Tyrion poisoned him after he broke the aura. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I guess he would have to break his aura. Now so this implies that, theoretically, the aura can actually stop the infection or poisons. Well, he would actually have to jab at, like, at, like, actually, like, well, uh, not, forgive uh, me for uh, saying, uh, uh, right. for wording it like this, like, penetrate Adam's body. Gotcha. Not entirely. Remember what I said? He just actually needs to just hold you. Because in both the remake and original, if he was to even grab a zombie, immediately the parasite would form over them and they'd become the mindless zombies that he can control. All right. So he could just need to grab Adam once. Now, let's say, okay, he can't grab him. But what if I told you the destruction that Nemesis is capable of delivering? And I want to ask, mate, if Adam's aura is strong enough to survive this. In his fight with William Birkin, he was a... Both of them created a tornado in their fight and caused an earthquake that could be felt across Raccoon City. Now, that is... How big is Raccoon now, City? That was something I heard in the comics for Nemesis. That So, I think Nemesis might have power in, it, in his department. Yeah, and... Yang, as far as we've seen in terms of destructive capabilities, was capable of destroying concrete pillars and a mech suit. And you, you want to use the military-grade thing? So, if Yang, who managed to destroy military-grade could shatter Adam's semblance or aura, Nemesis has also shown that same capability. So, and he's even shown even further, he can cause earthquakes just through his punches against William. Mm -hmm. So he'll just damage the aura and then he's open to infections through either impalement. Remember, it just needs to be a slight stab as well. It doesn't have to be like full impalement or in the eye. No, he just even needs to just get the shoulder, which he did to Jill in both the remake and original. And by the beam, he's paralyzed. So he's literally laid out like a plate of food for Nemesis. Boom. Okay, one more question. Do you have a number for that? And an earthquake on how to destroy a city would have to be on a similar scale as like, well, believe it or not, the nuke that hits uh, Hiroshima. And uh, do you know how strong that was? You might as well just say it. Uh, um, and up again. Yeah, it was over. It was over fifteen thousand equivalent of TNT, just twenty-five kilotons. That is how much it would take to cause an earthquake to destroy New York City. That's just low ball then. Even if you split it in half, course, it's still kind of impressive because he was fighting someone, so technically it'd be technically twelve and a half. And okay, and okay. nail in the coffin. That is what it took to kill Nemesis. Because either the re not no the remake he got killed by the laser when he was shoved in his mouth, which is fucking hardcore. In the remake though, he was left to be annihilated by a nuke. Okay. We've to be fair though, at this point he was just a goop on the floor, so there was no recovering for him. Maybe okay. you have a quick rebuttal? Oh. If I had something for that. Oh wait, I do. And it's a wife's feet. Mm -hmm. uh, when did it happen? That's the context I need to ask. Volume five. Okay, same volume that what was the volume six? Adam died. Volume six was when Adam died. Okay, so this counts. Yep. And remember, we can, you know, scale. Uh, Team Ruby to each other. Keep in mind, it took two members to take Adam down. Fair game, fair game. Yeah, and it's the durability of the Queen Lancer that uh, Weiss killed, which she could then summon uh, later on. Wait, and how was that durability number-wise? Okay, so it took a shit ton of... Um, uh, canisters of dust to the face and was unharmed. It was finished off by her uh, armor gigas summon. And uh, I have a calc uh, here calculating uh, the different canisters of dust, uh, the amount in the explosive yield. It came out to about 41 kilotons of TNT. 
Ooh. Okay, mate, here's a question. How's that an Adam feat? I said it's a wife's feat, but we can uh, scale up from her. Uh, her. But that's the thing, though. That wasn't even wise. That was really... Not that. That was against a Grim that could survive that. So let's divide yeah, this... Yeah, a Grim. And we know Adam's stronger than Grim. So let's divide this number. Uh, we never saw fair, him fight that Grim. Let us divide this number by the amount of people that it did take to defeat him. Even if we do that, that number is 20 and a half kilotons of TNT, which is greater than the Nemesis number with, that sa with the same scaling of splitting it. Okay, but here's the thing, that's not, that's actually not correct, because as we saw, the destruction in the comic book, a city's buildings were being leveled, whereas in the shot where that Grim got damaged, it didn't seem to do that much destructive capability, there's no shock waves or anything like that. It's, basically from what I'm understanding, is it took all this punishment before it was defeated. Yeah, it just took that explosion before it was defeated by the Armagigas. And dividing it by every member of Team Ruby, it's actually very close to the number that Nemesis has. It's that that's just kind of that's just like that Nora thing again, where it's like I don't think you can fairly scale that to Adam because he's not fought that Grim. So how can you really say that's fair? Alrighty, because we've never seen him fight so, strong Grim. It is time for the conclusion of this lads debate. All right, then, the big Billy Ween send-off. Well, so, let us begin with some easy, obvious Sorry. advantages. Obvious advantage of speed, Adam Torres, 100%. I disagree. Which is just going to help with the uh, semblance, just powering him up all the more. Power advantage, that goes to Nemesis. Like, short. Sure. The durability thing you could question, but raw power alone, I think Nemesis still has it in the bag. Arsenal also goes to Nemesis. He has more weaponry, so that's that one's obvious. Defense-wise, I'm going to have to give it to Adam Zora. So this comes down to something quite interesting. It's how Adam's semblance works. He takes the damage and fires it back. And with his superior speed, like when he fought the spider droid, and going at this gif again, I'm going to preview one more time, uh, it appears that he destroys it completely, correct? Yeah, he atomizes it. So, Nemesis, he has to compete with Nemesis's regen. Damn it, I knocked something over. My bad. <laughs> it was holding up my notebook. But, as far as I am aware, while you could argue Nemesis is definitely stronger, I think that strength also is a disadvantage because that can make Adam stronger and annihilate him if given the chance. But it also comes down to, can Nemesis infect Adam properly? I don't think he can. Because he would have to hit Adam some way or somehow or grab him. And with the consistent speed feats that Adam has shown, I think the winner of this last debate is Adam Torres. I disagree, but... I guess it really depends on how you, people will interpret this. I do think the virus is an instant win, though. The problem Adam is, slash me. The problem is Nemesis' strength is also a disadvantage. That's what also gives Adam the win, because he can use the power of Nemesis, fire it back, and even if Nemesis was able to hit with 25 kilotons and Adam was able to block it with his speed and reflexes, he can fire it back at Nemesis, which is enough to kill him, as you even said. Ooh. So, by the lo by the fact that the defenses, the speed, and just the sheer uh, ways that Nemesis has unreliable methods to hit Adam, I'm giving a lads of eight victory to Mate and Adam Torres. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. So, I do say that, but my main point I will for the say, whole... I will say, that conclusion kind of reminds me of Shadow V Ryuko. Like, at absolute max, could have delivered a killing blow if they could catch them. Yeah, so I think I didn't. Ex I think my issue was I didn't fully explain what I was going with the whole Adam thing. Adam was knocked down by something weaker than the earthquake. So I think that was my fault there. <laughs> Still good. Sorry. Mate, congratulations on your second victory on Vlad's debates. Bill, that was a really good effort. It was back and forth. It, I will admit, it was definitely close. So uh, I'm not sure how people are going to think of this because everyone I have spoken to 
who've given me the notes for this were on the hint I did that Nemesis win. So this could be our first controversial, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see how the poll goes when this comes out of the episode. But well, Wayne we'll... Sean. <laughs> so I will say it's kind of funny how this idea started off as a joke, but it actually did have an interesting debate to it. Because my whole thing was that can Nemesis' virus get through the aura, which I do think it can, but obviously it depends on how you view the aura sort of abilities. Yeah, overall, it, my conclusion was made up from the notes I've gathered for this debate. Yeah, so people, regardless if the poll people does say 90%, it doesn't matter, Sean decided a winner, so tough luck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure more people would want Nemesis to win. Uh, tough shit. <laughs> it is what it is. So, mate, you have won another lad today. Congratulations. Yeah. Nine. So, I guess so. Uh, yeah, that's our Billy Ween episode. And yeah, we're looking forward to. Uh, by the way, GG, mate, you did good. You managed to get Ruby another win on Lance Debate. <laughs> um, I'll take pride in that. Yeah. So. Uh, I, guess I mean, even if Adam about. lost, like, it's Adam. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's the same with Nemesis. It's like, eh. On the plus side, Jill doesn't have to deal with the Nemesis anymore. <laughs> this is near three hours. I think we should end. Yeah, so, right, people, so thank you all so much for watching. Uh, what did you think of Megatron versus Frieza? What do you think of the next time? And who do you think would win in this sort of debate? And that also brings me to our next third topic for the next recording session could be a controversial topic um uh, it's been a while since we've done a controversial one i think and that is going to be voted by you guys in second place of the uh top three third topics do death battle haters deserve to be shamed quote unquote now what do we mean by that does You'll everyone see. who don't like death battle a hater or do they generally bring criticism or do they have valid reasons for hating it are people to bring up we have topics to discuss about that but that will be for the next time for now though thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed what you saw here be sure to share the video around keep the channel growing and stick around we'll have more content like this in the future you're early mate uh thank you for watching did you enjoy freezer versus megatron uh if not i am sorry uh but also how uh are you as clueless as i am for the next time probably not this is me we're talking about and i might be a little late on uh, various things for the next time because I have something that is taking priority, which is my brother's wedding. Yay! Yeah, that takes priority over a death battle. Uh, but also, Billy, GG. I'm holding out my hand and moving it up and down as I am shaking yours. Like I am rubbing my webcam. Does that count? Actually, that's creepy. I'll still do it. <laughs> I'm so happy you said webcam. Uh... I mean, just like you said, though, it's like, who cares if either one of these guys wins or loses? Like, who gives a shit? Yeah. It's Nemesis and Adam. And if anyone you know gets their panties in a word, between... like, you know what, I'm just not going to go there. It's like saying, oh, who do you want to win between Hitler and Napoleon? It's like, I don't give a shit. Both can die for all I care. <laughs> can they both just get nuked? Exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, click the links, uh, subscribe to me and Sean, and I will see you whenever. Bye. Sean here. Thank you folks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this session of Lads Discuss Death Battle. What did you think of Freezer vs. Megatron? Who are you rooting for in Gojo vs. Makima? Uh, and who do you think the conclusion to this Lads debate was correct or incorrect? Leave your thoughts down below because I love reading your comments. With that being said, thank you folks for watching. I'll see you all later. Now, this is a Billy Ween video. Should I include a... <laughs>